Good evening. I'd like to call the Monday, October 15th, 2018 uh, Berlin Select Board to order. To my far left is Pete Kelly. To my left is Wayne Lamberton. To my right is J Jeremy Hansen. And to my far right is Angelina Capron. And with us also is Dana Hadley, the town administrator, and Diane Isabel, town treasurer. I am Brad Town. Um, the first order of business is a public hearing for input regarding ordinance to allow snowmobile and ATV travel on town roads. Specifically, since the way it was written, it's going to be Shed Road, Crosstown Road, Black Road, and Brookfield Road. Uh, to start the meeting out, I am going to have the emails read first, and then we'll go from there. Dana? Okay, I have two emails. Um, I'll read the shorter one first. Dana, I cannot make it to the public hearing about ATVs on Brookfield Road. I'd like to be recorded saying I am against this. There is enough noise pollution on Brookfield as it is, and I certainly don't want strangers possibly on my property trails. Catherine Ricker. <coughs> then I have a letter, uh, a longer email, um, and I'm going to... Um, this is from Tim Bingham on Shed Road, uh, and he's written this to, I guess, Josh Walker. Um, wondering if perhaps we could talk by telephone regarding the upcoming meeting and its resulting decision to allow or deny trail access on town roads. Naturally, I want people to have fun and be able to utilize all the trails available in Vermont. We simply need to be sure it is done in a safe manner, which does not unduly inconvenience residents and property owners. My house is situated at the corner of Shed and Crosstown Roads. We stand to be heavily impacted by additional vehicles using these roads. With the police department, town office, and highway department at the end of Shed Road, we already have many thousands of cars and trucks yearly who already use this narrow residential street. During late summer and early fall, the Berlin Highway Department has over 10,000 tons of material delivered which they stockpile. To get this all delivered requires about 1,000 trucks passing in front of my house that includes loaded and empty passes. <coughs> During the winter months, they then move all that material out to treat the town roads for safe winter travel. This means <coughs> probably 1,400 trucks passing in front of my house, empty and loaded as the town trucks are smaller than the delivery vehicles. The front of my house is situated just 10 and a half feet from the edge of the pavement of Shed Road. Of course, the police come and go 24 hours a day, in addition to the office personnel at the town building, and in evenings there are many town committees that gather for various purposes. On election days and when it gets close to the quarterly tax payments and water sewer payments being due, then we have many hundreds of additional vehicles that come down past us to access the town office. So if you come to the town office in the evening or on the weekends, it might appear to be a sleepy little street which belies the actual heavy usage of the road. We hear and see hundreds of vehicles daily travel both these roads and many far exceed the posted speed limits. So my concerns are regarding safety, additional traffic <coughs> and noise in and around my neighborhood. Wondering about the viability of using shed or crosstown roads since they are usually heavily plowed and sanded, with both of these roads really snow-covered, will this tear up the bottom of a snowmobile and its front skis? Honestly, I'm not interested in having yet more noise added to my neighborhood in addition to the conditions I already mentioned. Of course, we are situated not far from the interstate and hear the steady drone of vehicles traveling there. Is there something I'm missing? You're welcome to write me back here or give me a try in my home telephone number. And he listed his telephone number. Tim Bingham, 13 Shed Row. I think Tim said he was going to be here today, too. Tim is here. Yes. Oh. Right here. Okay. I should have had him read it. <laughs> I think it's something kind of clear. You know, we're not really trying to get these total roads open up. It's only like for little sections of the road. And um, as for like the snowmobile traffic, We've already talked with a few of the landowners where we won't even be using Shed Road for the snowmobile access, where we would come across by the uh, church into the field and come along the uh, road that is right across from Shed Road, the old the old pond road from that used to be there before the interstate mm -hmm. went in. 
And then we would then um, go from there and cross the pond. And I talked with uh, Tom Willard, who owns the, land, the house right on the other side of the pond. And he is for having a trail, access to a trail as well. And, and from there, we'd only be on the pavement for just that one little section right there where it crosses the pond. Once we got past Tom's driveway, we would be with the help of the town and with uh, grooming equipment, we would be up off the road. We'd be on the side of the road in the, you know, more or less ditch during the summer. But we'd be on the side of the road to get under the interstate. And then as soon as we turn left to uh, head like around the pond, it's going to go right up into the field right there. And then go through the fields there and through the woods and then down onto uh, Black Road. So and then onto Black Road is where we would need to have access on Black Road and onto uh, Brookfield Road just to the bottom of uh, Darling Road, which is the trailhead that's existing there now. Uh, Josh, <coughs> you state your name again and take in uh, where you live. I'm Josh Walker, and I live on Black Road. Okay. <coughs> okay, uh, Jeremy. So I have uh, eight here. I'm just going to go through them in the order that I copied and pasted it. <coughs> it's a short one. Uh, I'm for it. Let's set speed limits and keep rural life in Vermont. The next one is, uh, as residents of Brookfield Road for the past 40 years, we strongly urge the board to deny the proposal as currently presented. Though not as directly affected by it, it as will be some of our neighbors near the Black and Darling Roads, we protest use of the Ponds Roads for increased recreational purposes, especially when they pose such obvious safety hazards for both residents and recreationists. The road between the junction of the Brookfield and Black Roads to Darling Road has several blind curves and hills that are challenging enough to negotiate currently. As one who travels Brookfield Road on a daily basis, it's hard to believe that allowing use of this area for snowmobiles and ATVs can be anything other than a recipe for disaster, not only in low light conditions, but at any time of the day for all who use it. Uh, next one. I'm writing to... Who's that? I, I, I don't have all the names copied in. Oh. I, I didn't know if they wanted to, to share their names, but they, they live on Brookfield Road, they said. Okay. Uh, I'm writing to communicate my disapproval of permitting these vehicles and our snow machines to travel extensive distances on town roads, notwithstanding any insurance that a local group might have access to through its affiliation with VASA. I believe that particular coverage has shared limits, which reduces its protection of any single town because other claims will erode the coverage. In the end, it seems that the town could serve as a deep pocket in the event of a tragic accident, and to me it seems like an unnecessary risk for the town to take for the benefit of a select few. The next one, uh, and this is from Tom Willard. My wife and I live adjacent to Crosstown Road and the trail would pass directly in front of our house. We do not have any objections to the trail and think a trail connecting to Northfield would be a benefit to the town. Road and safety issues we will leave to others. We'd like a discussion on the expected intensity of use if it's a vast trail and whether the creation of a local trail rather than a vast trail might be a good start. Some of the public land the trail would pass through is encumbered by easements held by agencies such as the Vermont Land Trust, and we need to check these easements before a trail is constructed. The Berlin Conservation Commission has managed the lands for a hierarchy of uses, including protection of natural resources and recreation. There are existing trails dedicated to other recreational uses, such as hiking and skiing, and the creation of a new trail would have to be a multi-use trail. That should not be a problem. Before the town approves any new trail use, the proposal should be referred to the Conservation Commission for review. Um, I'm going to read kind of the, the punchline of a longer email discussion. My weighing in was pr primarily not understanding the limitation of the ordinance. After seeing it identified as basically a passing through, I think it should be up to the folks more closely affected, and with the stipulation that they stay on the identified trails. Would not want to see them on the bike path next door, which is, in, which is state land, and this person lives on Crosstown Road a bit farther up. Um, I don't have a strong opinion, but call me skeptical. Is this really, really necessary, and does it have to be for ATVs? And has anyone taken into account noise and fume impacts on houses along the roads? It can be very bad for those forced to live near active trails used by motorized vehicles. There are issues with curfew and hours, idling near homes, etc. New snow machines are somewhat quieter and cleaner, but not all are new. And those who ride the machines can be, well, negative towards homeowners or, or anyone who reports violations. This has happened other places where trails are close to houses. It would be great to set up a clear path for complaints, one that came to the select board, and allow for a public process. And here's the next one. I've had a fair number of these machines, as well as dirt bikes, traveling on Chase Road past my house. Their noise is intrusive and on an otherwise peaceful day, and it's really frightening to come around the corner on a snowy day to find a snowmobile speeding towards me. 
For the safety of the public, I believe this is a hazard that can be avoided. I give a robust no to the whole proposal. And then the final one, I'm not in favor of this at all. We already have ATVs that come down off the mountain and fly down the road. We also have traffic from 4x4 vehicles that think the road is for off-roading. I'm guessing that the neighborhood would be either. We have public comment. Uh, yes? Hello, my name is Corey Covey. Uh, yeah. You want me to step forward? Okay. My name is Corey Covey. I live at 271 Black Road. Um, lived there for about 30 years now. I own a fair piece of land there. I don't have a problem in principle with snowmobiles traveling back and forth from Northfield into Berlin to Maplewoods or whatever. I have some of the same concerns that we've already heard in emails. I think it's going to negatively uh, affect traffic on what's already become increasingly heavily traveled roads. We have a lot of pedestrian traffic and dog walkers and bird watchers and you know bicyclists and everything else. Um, I think that's going to be an issue. That's going to be a concern. That's probably the biggest concern. I think it opens the town up to some potential liability there, which is also a concern. Uh, I think that if VASA and VAST are interested in, in making that route, they need to find a better way to do it. Public roads are not the place for it. We have fairly narrow roads in part of the area that's that's proposed. Going under the interstate here is a very narrow, fairly narrow road. Um, Black Road, since I live on it and have for all these years, I can tell you it's very narrow, almost no shoulders for a good portion of the road. Uh, several blind corners, you've got an off-camber turn where Black Road comes down into Brookfield Road. I've seen, I can't even tell you how many cars off that corner over the course of my years here. So that's going to be an issue. Um, I think it's a safety concern. I don't see any safe way on this proposed route to run snowmobiles or ATVs there and not cause problems for residents, for recreational users, walkers, you know, the, the whole panoply of folks. So I would certainly hope that you folks would weigh that when you make this consideration just you know take into mind the, the potential for liability to the town and also the, the increased potential for an accident that could result in injury or worse for the folks that have to use these roads like myself every day that's it okay thank you thank you anyone else yes I know I spoke, I spoke with Josh about the roof, but I'm not entirely clear. Do you have a map that you can actually, because you say it's coming by the church, which I'm not fully understanding. Well, um, well, that would be, we haven't talked, spoke with all the landowners over there. I have kind of talked with uh, Henry and Chip Legue, who own property over there, which would impact them. And they were like, yeah, no, we'll talk about it when the time comes. And they weren't opposing it. And the trail, mm -hmm. the existing trail now goes behind Shaw's and it comes over to Maplewood. And then through there, the state owns some land. There's some other landowners there, and we we're hoping to uh, possibly talk with them and where we could just come from behind Shaw's, cross Comstock Road, and get into the field, you know, this side of the church, and then come across um, down through the old Woodbury, the, the old Woodbury house that, mm -hmm. that's across from the church. They have a big field that goes all the way down to the pond. So we go get right down to the pond there, and then take the old pond road, which is straight across from Shed Road. So we come out right there. Okay, so and, and we don't have a map exactly of where the trail would go now because we haven't spoke with all the landowners. This is like the first hurdle. To okay, so the old pond road comes out to this side of the bridge. So they would be coming out at a right angle this side of the bridge. Correct. Going across that narrow little bridge, unfortunately. Exactly. Staying now the problem is this two-way traffic. This is all going to be groomed once they get on the road. It will be. It, so you, if you have two-way traffic on just one side of the road, or will it be? It would be on one side of the road. And so from. And it would be on um, Tom Willard's side of the road. Okay, and then that goes up into the field where you can see tracks going up there. Now. Correct. Right the there. Field, and then where do you come in on Black Road? Um, right down. Um, Right at the bottom, you know where the brook with the little bridge yeah. is there? Right there where it comes out of, that's my field there, where it comes out of the bottom of my field where you can kind of access my field right there. Yeah. It would come out onto Black Road right there. Oh, okay. Because originally I thought it was going to go up to the top of the hill and go there. Well, that's why I kind of wanted to um, mention that we really only need about a mile, roughly a mile of actual road okay. use. And then, uh, and then mainly on that, it's not like we're going right down the road. We're way on the side of the road, you know, when the town plows, they plow three or four feet beyond the actual traveled portion of the road. 
and you know, that's all we're looking for is just that little area, right? You Once know. you're on Black Road, will they just be on the right side? I mean, which because it again, it's a two-way. Well, on, on Black Road, I spoke with the city of Montpelier, which owns the land on the left, and they definitely oppose it. But there's actually an old there's a power line right of way down through there. And you know, if it comes to it, we were going to try to talk with uh, I think it's Washington Electric that owns the uh, right of way, and that's where the trail used to be. There used to be a trail. This whole area we're talking about used to be snowmobile trail back years ago. And, and as I had said to you on the phone too, my my major concern is that we haven't talked about Irish Hill trails, but um, it should be the conservation commission that should be. That's a absolutely, that's that's our next um, step is the conservation committee from here because they're the next big <coughs> landowner or the you had reassured me that it will be going up Darling Road Trail to Ridgeline, going up Ridgeline, along the ridge, getting permission from all landowners. Correct. And that it would be it, you know, that's the way we propose it to go. We don't know if once we get up there there's gonna be people that aren't gonna want it, so we're definitely gonna look for another way. Okay. So that it would be contingent year to year if and my concern is that some of those would go off trail, but if they stay on those two trails, mm -hmm. I don't have a problem with those two trails. I, I think I'd have a problem with this. Normally, once there's a, a groomed trail system through and signs up saying stay on trail or we lose the trail, they, people stay on the actual trail because a lot of times with these machines are so heavy, you get off the groomed trail and you're stuck. So mm -hmm. mainly everybody stays on the trail. I can't say there is some people out there that do ruin it for everybody else, right. but it's very minimal. And that would be my main concern are those trails. That if people stay on the trails, great. And, 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 and I'll tell you also, it's like 90% of the snowmobilers out there, if they find somebody off the trail, or if they're doing something to impact the trail system, they're getting a little talking to. And asked to leave, actually. And, and we're really looking for this for uh, to start out is maybe on a yearly basis just to see if you know, everything's going to work, if there's going to be problems, let us know and we'll work the problems out or reroute a different way. This, this is it's such a hard area right here because of the pond and the interstate. There's no other real places to cross. There's a, there's a crossing over in Williamstown, which is a heck of a lot worse than this crossing right here. Than, than what we would be doing here. I don't know if you've seen the trail system through there, but it's they're crossing all the, the exits and under the interstate and on the road. But that's mainly it. Yes, ma'am. I'm Gail Kilkelly. I live on Brookfield Road 2745 and right past the <coughs> intersection with Black and Brookfield. And so I, I have two questions. First of all, what's the speed limit? that the snowmobiles would be You can set a speed to? limit. It's mainly the road uh, speed limit that's on the road there. Or it's 25 miles or 35 miles an hour. It's whatever speed limit is. It, it, the board could set the speed limit and we could put it to whatever they want the and traffic is, moving at. Is there any restriction <coughs> about night use? There's not. There is in some areas a curfew of 11 o'clock, I believe. But that, those <coughs> curfews can be this is Dave. This is Dave Rule. He's the uh, president of the Barry Stone. Barry Stone Undershift. Yeah. 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 He can answer a lot of the logistics yeah. on that. If, so if, I, if we could, I've got some maps that people are trying to look to see where the proposal is. The visual aids are helpful yeah. if you just people pass them around. So I, I, I want you to know that I did a lot of snowmobiling when I was young. My parents had property in northern New Hampshire. It was the only way to get in in the winter. It was a heck of a lot of fun. It, it was. It was a really important part of our lives. Uh, Berlin Pond is kind of a different situation. Um, it, it's a, I, I bought a house there almost 25 years ago because it was so beautiful and so remote. And I know what the sound of the snowmobiles are going to be on Brookfield Road because we've already had them. Mm -hmm. And my house is really close to the road. And I'm also speaking for Chad Wolf, who lives next to me, and he couldn't be here tonight, but he asked me to speak to him as well. And so my concerns are a couple. Um, Brookfield Road right now gets an awful lot of traffic from huge trucks and lots more cars. Somebody also talked about the, the walkers and the, the, the dog walkers and the birders and all of that. And there's a lot of people on there a lot of the time. 
and it's congested. And it's, when the big trucks go by, it's bad enough. But with snowmobiles, they're really, really noisy. And my house is right on the road, so I think it's going to be a tremendous amount of noise. We've already had them at night as well, which is really scary because if it's snowing and they're out there, I'm just really concerned about accidents and my driveway is short. And I, I just, I don't think it's going to be a very good idea. Um, like, like, like Mr. Coveney, we're really, really against this. I want you to be able to have a trail. I want you to be able to have it somewhere. But on the road, it's going to be noisy, and the nights are going to be terrifying. There's right in front of my house is is a place that has a great big ditch because the, the the creek comes down between my house and Chad Wolf's house comes down, mm -hmm. and there's a there's no barrier. There, there's no way for anybody to know where is the road and where is not the road, and then there's a huge fall off. Mm -hmm. And I just I I don't think it's a good idea. Yeah. I want you to, to have a way, but not on Brookfield. Don't get me wrong. We're really trying to get away from the road right there. Very hard to get away from the road right there because we don't like traveling the road with our snowmobiles either. And I've talked with the landowners there, and um, we just can't. We can't get through that way. They, you know, we will be looking for an alternative, but we didn't want to spend a lot of legwork for an alternative if we couldn't get this little section opened up here to, to get across the pond and under the interstate. That's that's a, that's what this meeting is mainly about. Sorry. No, understandable. Um, yes, <clears throat> my name is Mark Reeves. I'm the Washington County Director for Bass. And I just wanted to address, there, uh, the town would have, have the ability to set the speed limits and the uh, and a curfew on the trail uh, when, it can when it can be traveled. So, Really, an ordinance would give the town some uh, uh, enforcement action. They can set fines. They can set uh, what roads are open, what roads are not open. Um, so there's a lot of rulemaking authority in, in, in having a snowmobile ordinance. So, and we have had a successful shared use. In fact, last year a trail was actually built into the city of Newport, so people could access the uh, restaurants and stuff along Lake Infermega. We uh, we have the soon to be 90 mile long um, Lamoille Valley Rail Trail where it's a shared use trail with horses and uh, bikes and walkers and cross country skiers. We really try to work because we, we're landowners too. So we try to make sure that uh, we um, share the, the, the resources of the area as responsibly as possible. And I understand your concerns, I, I really do. And I, I would never want to minimize them, but allowing um, the use of the roads the town would have the ability to enforce some um, uh, rules and restrictions on the use. So. You can't try and change the noise, though. There are decibel level uh, requirements. So, anyone else? Yes, sir. Uh, Brian Grierson, I'm a resident of the town. I, my concern is, uh, well, it's a slippery slope, really. You're, as I understand it, this would be the first time. The town of Berlin has opened up its roads to these off-road vehicles. No, uh, no, actually, years ago there was an ordinance. We just rescinded it June 20th, three years ago, and they, what, there were uh, there was uh, loud use for snowmobiles on the public roads. But that's been rescinded. Nobody, nobody, the trails. It, the, when Vass came in, they took they put trails where they took the snowmobiles off the roads. Okay. My point is simply that I think it's, I think these folks ought to be able to go on trails, but I think when you open up a public road for this particularly Crosstown Road, which is one of the most heavily traveled roads in this area, the police have said that the town access, um, there are uh, people hiking in this area. This right outside the door here is, a, is an ice rink. Uh, where uh, young people come and go all the time during the winter for for skating. Um, but the fact of the matter is, I know you said that some people will veer off these trails um, and they're the, the bad actors that you try to control, but when they go off the trails here, they're going to be in the public highway. Uh, there's no question. But they don't go off the trail on a public highway. You're well, when they come out, when, if I understand, if they're coming out of Shed Road, if they're coming out of the Brook Trail, they're going to come out, and if there's no cars coming, they're going to be on, they're going to have to cross the bridge, mm -hmm. 
and that's a public highway. Mm -hmm. And they're going to probably stay right on that highway. I've seen them. I do. I've seen them now without a trail, so I don't expect it will be any less. But I think it's it should be a real concern for this town to take a step of opening up this highway for this purpose. Uh, there's plenty of trails that they can use. They do not need this one. It might make it better for them, a more enjoyable ride. Uh, but that's not a reason for the town uh, to open up this area uh, for this kind of traffic. Uh, it, it's just, there, there's, no, there's no benefit, if you will, to the people who are impacted by it. Um, if you live in another part of town, I'm sure it's not an issue, but anyone living in this area, uh, it's going to impact them, and it's going to impact them significantly. And if, it, if it's, I, I'm concerned that if this is the map, this is only showing a small portion of, of the trail, and I would think that the town would ask for uh, a full, uh, a, a full map of the trail that they're proposing, um, and that they have permission from uh, individual landowners, as opposed to a patchwork uh, proposal that appears to be before you tonight. The only other thing I would say is if the town is going to go ahead with this, then they should restrict it to daytime hours. I mean, this is a residential area. It's a heavily traveled road um, with emergency vehicles going in and out of all hours of the night. Um, okay. Anyone else? I, uh, my name is Ken McGregory. I'm a new resident here. Um, I like snowmobilers. They're most 90% of them are great. I moved here from, uh, and I had the same concerns. Uh, I live on Crosstown Road. I'm concerned about traffic. I'm concerned about who's going to enforce this. I mean, everyone talks about you know the the town can enforce all these things. You got two or three police cars and uh, four people or five working uh, all the enforcement, and that seems to be a concern. But my experience of living out in North Faston was before moving here. Uh, that they did have fast trails and the snowmobilers were, were good, but there were a lot of people going out and I think they had 11 o'clock at night curfews as well and the, the <coughs> snowmobiles were passing through there at 10.30, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock sometimes on Friday, Saturday night, very noisy uh, up and down the road and it was very distracting. So living on Cross Crosstown Road, my concern is that according to the letter I received, they'd be coming out of Shed Road. I know it's different. So when I'm back here listening, but it, it covers about a mile on, on the weather, yeah. before you can do anything, you have to know where they're going before you can have even this meeting. Really, I mean, you know, I'm coming here basing it on. Right, well, there was a post on Front Porch yeah. Forum that made it sound yeah. that way, which wasn't real. Yeah, right. so uh, uh, my only concerns would be, you know, being on the highway, like Crosstown Road, uh, and the noise issue, and uh, late night driving. I mean, Crosstown Road does have a lot of traffic now. And then enforcement becomes an issue. It's a cost for the town. I mean, I don't know what benefits are coming other than shopkeepers and, you know, like the, the, uh, the gas station up here would certainly, that's a starting point according to the letter. And they would get a lot of people on their way out and coming back and that sort well, of thing. Well, it's just on the route, there's already a trail that goes to the, to yeah. the gas station there. Yeah. And the other thing is, I mean, just in terms of living at the corner, I've been here and the people are all very nice, but my wife and I go out every day to get the mail and we end up picking up trash along the road. And that becomes an issue too. I mean, people, there's, whenever you got people traveling, you've got, you know, picnic lunches and things and stuff gets left behind. Somebody's got to pick it up. Uh, the environment is affected by it. So, uh, my, but again, I want to come back. My main concern is noise. And uh, and I may uh, uh, probably it's not good to call a club funder <coughs> anything funder chicken <laughs> uh, right off that got to me uh, but ju just the, the traffic on Crosstown Road right. so thank you um, Mark yes, Reeves again I, I want to speak to a couple of those things uh, the state law requires uh, all exhausts on snowmobiles to be 73 decibels or less. Uh, using a, a decibel gum that the state police wield quite frequently. Um, the other thing is enforcement. The county has a contract with the uh, county sheriff's office, and we, in fact, we've bought them snowmobiles specifically for enforcement. 
they have no problem whatsoever con um, with clubs contacting them and saying, hey, we've had uh, landowner complaints in a specific area and sitting there and nailing people who are violating. Um, we also, VAST also contracts with the Fish and Game and the State Police to also provide enforcement. So it doesn't fall back on the town. Um, it can fall back on the town if the town felt it was something they wanted to do, but most towns don't. Um, we have the Sheriff's Department and we have the State Police and Fish and Wildlife who uh, patrol uh, our trail systems. Yes, sir. Dave Rulo, president of the Berrytown Thunder Chickens. The Thunder name came from late 1972. It's not representative now. Uh, also certified uh, snowmobile safety instructor. I have been for about uh, 20 years, and I'm the county liaison between the 13 clubs in Washington County and Washington County Sheriff. Um, in our snowmobile class, I mean, we're always teaching safety, all that kind of stuff, but uh, hear a lot of comments, and I know we're running out of time, so I'll keep it real short, but um, we've got signs out there that... Uh, just all the snowmobilers are used to shared juice. Uh, we do a ton of this up the town of Berry Forest. There's mountain bikers, there's walkers, there's uh, bird walkers, nature walkers. Snowmobilers get this. So they see these things, and they slow right down and they're going through. One of the things we actually deal with uh, is the snowmobiles are so quiet these days when people are out walking their dog and stuff, they don't hear the snowmobiles coming. Um, and that noise will be minimized when they're just going through town going up on the side of the road like this They're going to be kind of just poking along. That's not you know The snowmobile is going to make noise when it's going full bore through a, to a road But most people aren't out there just to go fast and make noise um, So I understand the noise concern, but that can be controlled with law enforcement and stuff, but they're all uh, four stroke sleds even the two stroke sleds are much quieter very clean uh, engines out there. We have a lot of logging trails out there, uh, so we coexist with uh, logging operations out there. Um, the slow signs, uh, we, we, we've got it all. We can do most anything, but uh, we definitely appreciate everybody coming out, uh, hearing both sides, uh, and hopefully that will help you guys make your decisions. But no, we're running out of time, but certainly I can answer any questions anybody has, you know, either tonight or, you know, after the thing. Feel free to contact me. BerrytownThunderChickens.com, just email. Uh, my contacts are on there. Yes, sir. Jerry DeAmantidis, I live on Brookfield Road. I, I have a question. One, what is it that's before the board here? Um, is it just before the board to use that small piece of Brookfield Road and the small sections of road that we're looking? Is that what's officially well, what's before the board, or is it all of Brookfield Road before the board? Well, what was what was uh, warned was a public hearing for the uh, for snowmobiles and ATV to travel on roads, but in the uh, in the printing of it, it was um, allowed uh, for travel on Shed Road, Crosstown Road, Black Road, and Brookfield Road, and I believe they were looking for very specific sections of each road. I get that from the discussion, yeah. but when the board makes a decision, is the board making a decision to a mile marker? or is the board making a decision for Brookfield Road? Because Brookfield Road goes a long way, and there's lots of other places to, match, to catch up with trails through various places along Brookfield Road. So is it, that's what I'm trying to understand. Are we talking about a very prescribed piece in the ordinance or whatever, whatever your well, action the, will be? The, the ordinance will be, if we, if we pass an ordinance, it'll be for the entire town. And then we'll, we will, the board will take and allow for specific use of certain parts of each road. So, if you want it to a mile marker, if that's the way you want to view it, yes, it'll be to a mile. Well, marker. I, I think it makes a really big difference because yeah. I, I know there's lots of self-policing, and that's that's a wonderful thing. But you've got a mile straight stretch of Brookfield Road where you can catch air, and there's all sorts of all, you know all sorts of fun you can have, and I mean. I can tell you just from driving my pickup truck on the road, it wasn't that long ago I came around a bend where, and a rise, as we have on Brookfield yeah. Road, very limited sight, mm -hmm. three baby carriages right across the road. Mm -hmm. Full road, three baby. If I wasn't doing less than the speed limit at that point, that would have been a problem. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, I recognize that, that, that folks are thinking about the little area that they might want to use, but... Brookfield Road has a lot of multi-use all different times of the year when there's snow on the ground. And 
I also have another point that I'd like to make about ATVs, which I don't understand at all, why ATVs would want to be on Brookfield Road. I mean, during mud season, that would, that would, that would just make more work for you guys, hand over fist. It would be, I mean, and again, self-policing, it's wonderful when some folks self-police, but the one guy that's doing the spin-outs, and we've seen it up on Irish Hill, you can walk up there and see where the ATVs have done the spin-outs, and you know, what used to be a place where the water naturally ran over time is, 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 is now a big, uh, a, you know, a big marsh pit because the whole thing got tore up from ATVs. So I, I don't understand at all ATV use on, on Brookfield Road. I mean, on, other than just, you know, transportation from one, from one point to another, maybe even on your own property. But I, I, I don't get it for recreational use. It doesn't make sense to me. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, yeah, Andrea Galatano, I live on Brookfield Road, uh, 649. Uh, we've had a lot of trouble with uh, ATVs, uh, groups of guys on dirt bikes, um, mountain bikers. They decide they can just drop in from up top where the, uh, where the radio tower is and cross our land. It's, uh, it's posted. Uh, they do it anyways. They just don't seem to care. Uh, I don't know what the full plan is here, but it looks to me like what they want to do is go further south, and it's just going to cause more problems. Yes, sir. Uh, Jim Poinell, Vice President of uh, Barrytown Thunder Chickens and an active member of the local ATV clubs as well. And it probably would be safe to say that I'm the one that started all this mess by showing up here last July, starting all this stuff going on. I've heard a lot of things tonight, a lot and a lot of fairly strong language and pretty power charge adjectives and all that sort of stuff, and I understand how that stuff comes and goes. But I also heard about a lot of things that are already happening currently that people are using for examples to not do this. In my experience, and I've been doing this since this price probably started 50 years ago, I, I grew up in this town back in the 60s, and we used to ride our snow machines from Berlin Four Corners right under that very bridge and up that trail and around, and we used to come across the upper bridge up above. and the, to my knowledge, the main reason that those are not there is this that's an entirely volunteer organization and stuff happens. All it takes is two or three guys that you get divorced or something happens there, you move and the guys aren't there to keep the signs up and, and the trail fell down so the maintenance wasn't there and didn't get picked up. But the, there's already machines out there. Part of the research of this, it, it starts out with any of this stuff, is this physically possible? You know, can you really get from here to there and make a trail? And we've done some legwork and found that there really are trails there. And along the way, we see there's people traveling out there now. I've heard people talking about snowmobiles on the road already, ATVs on the road, things happening. There, to just snap one's fingers to make that all go away is next to impossible. The next best thing is to get involved with organized groups, when, you know, to use them as a management tool, to build an organized trail, if people are chewing up the trails and stuff, it's part of our job to go and fix that. If people are someplace where they're not supposed to be, that where the guy, Dave, gets calls. If somebody's out here doing something they're not supposed to be, they know it's us, they call Dave, he calls the sheriff, things get taken care of. We've got the police department right here. It's kind of hard to believe. You've got to be much, pretty, quite a numbskull to be coming through and within sight of the police station not following the rules, at least in these sections of town where, where people are concerned. I, I, for things, there are things that I don't partake in, my, partake in myself that sometimes you wonder why do people do that anyway? That must be, it must smell bad, look bad, taste bad, make a lot of noise and that sort of stuff. But my personal experience is it, it really doesn't create near the nuisance that folks are, are, are wanting to think that it is. Our riders are for the most part licensed drivers. They understand roads. They understand how they work. They know you look twice before you cross the street or before you go anywhere. They know they're the smallest guy on the road, so they're really careful. Night riding is actually more safer than day riding. You can see headlights coming. You can see, see what's going on out there. I guess to, to not uh, stretch this on all night, we see signs everywhere, share the road. We can share the road with horseback riding and agricultural vehicles and pedestrian and bicycle riders and all that sort of stuff. If, if our membership cannot prove that they can responsibly and safely and without making a nuisance of themselves use these short sections of roads, which is this is what this is really all about, just these short accesses to get from one trail point to another, 
then the town should rescind that, and they should they should not have that privilege. But personally, I feel like we still live in a, a rural state where they ought at least be given the chance. And if they can't behave themselves, if they're going to create a nuisance, if they're going to create unsafe conditions, then then they're done. And that's that's where I stand on that. Thank you. Okay. Unfortunately, we've come to the end of the uh, the public hearing on this. We'll have uh, two more. Mm -hmm. And uh, you'll be more than welcome to voice your opinions then. But for right now... I also encourage you, if you want, send emails to the town administrator or to any of the select board members if you'd like to, if you don't think you can make it back in time sure. for one of the future meetings. And the other thing before everybody leaves, uh, how many of you folks that are living in Berlin uh, mm -hmm. are for this and a show of hands. Okay. Those of you who would be against this, just a show of hands. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Bye. Yeah, yeah. 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 I was surprised. Yeah. So there's two. Yeah. They have one out in East Brookfield underneath uh, Massacre Hill Road. Okay. No, no. That's, we haven't seen it. That's a group that I was not familiar with. Yeah. Can we ask for one? I guess so. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's kind of get one. But well, you okay. know what? It's no. just no, no. Okay. It's their responsibility. Okay. If they come again and they're not prepared and they can't show us what they have, well, that's not our problem. Conditions and changes to the agenda data? I have none. Hello, okay. And okay. Thank you. Public comment? Okay. Okay. So at the beginning of October, um, I had the field work done for the audit, and that took two days. And they're completely done as far as the field work part of it. Right now, we're just emailing each other back and forth for any additional information they may need. And the auditor did feel very confident that she could have this done uh, to, from the beginning to the middle of December which would meet our deadline as far as having the audit complete, so she felt that could happen. Okay, good. And then I did forget to include the reports that I normally give to you, um, the trial balance, budget status report, and delinquent tax report, because uh, I was on vacation last week, but I'll send those to you in an email, or I can include them in the next meeting that we have. Next meeting. Next meeting? Okay, I could do that. Okay, so that's all I have. Okay. Um, Approval of licenses, permits, vouchers, and applications. Is there a chance to look through them? I do. I can do that if you're ready. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Thank you. Okay. Um, Move to approve general fund accounts payable award number 19G08 uh, with checks 18531 through 18562 in the amount of $88,932.62. Also, payroll warrant number 19-08 for payroll from September 30th, 2018 through October 13th, 2018 in the amount of $42,928.95. Also, the September journal entries and tax admin adjustment and the September balanced bank statements for the General Fund, Sewer Commission, and the Water Division. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Okay, Charles Merriman and Josh Walker, Black Road. Hi, my name is Charlie Merriman. Um, would you like for me to address it? I presume you saw my uh, memo, whether you had a chance to read it or not. You might have to take out the code. Go ahead. No. Oh, geez. Uh, if you had a chance to read it, then you know that our request that cannot be filled today because you, you can't vote on it. But a request is that you extend the width 
of the uh, of the working area that the that the um, that the walkers have in respect to Black Road. You set a width of. Did, did, I'm sorry, I don't mean to grill you, but did you have an opportunity to read my my memo? Okay, so you know it's set to 16 and a half feet, and uh, it's just not enough uh, space because it does not include that portion of the road that is the natural uh, um, runoff area for uh, Black Black Road. And the problem we're running into is that Miss Doubt has been trying to affect a change in the water flow such that it comes onto the road. And Josh is being very mindful of the 16 and a half feet uh, area that he has to work in. And she is putting detritus outside of that 16 foot, uh, 16 and a half foot uh, area to affect this redirection of the water. And she has no right to do that because in addition to uh, it just being a, a bizarre thing to do, putting detritus in the middle of a uh, right-of-way, it's not her property. So I don't even know why the doubts are here fighting the walkers over the maintenance of the uh, Black Road. And it seems to me the simple way to, solution, uh, to solve this is to widen uh, the, the uh, walkers' area of, uh, of their permit and it's probably going to go away. So that's basically what we're asking. <clears throat> so um, I want to first point out that I think we have a civility problem in this country um, in a lot of different ways. And while I appreciate some of the previous work that you've done, Mr. Merriman, um, in other, other cases, other things you've done in your professional work, I find the letter that you wrote to be rude and fairly offensive in the way that it categorized Ms. Stout. And, Notwithstanding whatever facts, but just the way that you suggested that she calmed down and, and various things, I just found it um, lacking tact. So I'm just going to put that up there. And to that I would respond that I will not back down from anything that I said there. Her behavior is outrageous and it's uncivil and it needs to be called out. I was very, very careful with my words because I make a living with my words and each one of those is defensible. If, if Ms. Dow has a question about it, and she wants to bring up some claim of defamation, she can do it. I'm not I will speak that way to the court, and it will speak that way to this, to this, uh, to this tribunal as well, because that is the incivility here, is the behavior. I'm not talking about what Ms. Dowd's perspective. I'm, I'm, I'm reading it not as a lawyer, I'm reading it as a person who read your letter, and I found it to be, I found it to be rude and offensive. Fine, I'm not going to be castigated by like that. Heard you, don't accept it. We're discussing the permit. Yep. Um, so the, the question before the board is just whether or not to uh, widen the permit from 16 and a half feet to the full width of the road. Because they they actually don't own the land on that road. They own none of that land on that road. When my uh, grandparents' house got sold, they used to own both sides of that road, and I own both sides of the road down farther. And when they that land was subdivided and sold. Their property line is at the edge of the road, not the middle of the road. Okay. So, <clears throat> sure, go ahead, Pete. So it seems the definition of the term right of way means that somebody does not own the land because otherwise you don't need a right of way. So for me, the key, the, the um, key page here is number three. Okay where you talk about uh, map 98.5 reveals that the Dow's 3.45 acre parcel abuts the west edge of the Black Road right away, but does not extend into it. So to me, that says they don't own the underlying land. Correct. And then at the bottom, it says, although I've not completed my research into the matter, I suspect the walkers own the land over which the right of way lies. So it sounds like if you had a survey, I mean, a legitimate survey, of that line. Got it right here. Yeah. Well, the only non-owner that has any right of way would be the town. And Josh, you have taken the responsibility. I mean, you came, you gave, uh, unconditionally, by the way. You knew you had a water problem. You knew you had an issue with the neighbor. But you unconditionally took responsibility to maintain that road. 60% of the board gave you that permission. So it seems to me if the walkers do in fact own that property, there's not even an issue here. 
Well, I mean, actually, they can't go into the town's right of way. They don't own the land. If if that's no, they could go. So just quickly on rights of way. You're right. The land underneath it is owned by some way, and it might not be owned by the walkers. Well, I mean, I've run into some really weird situations where property gets transferred out, right. such that the road is owned by somebody who doesn't even have land contiguous to the road anymore. Right. And if you look at the very map that I show you, you'll see that it also shows that the walkers' property doesn't go to the center of the road either. So it's still an open question. I think they probably own it for the reasons I gave, that the, at one time it was all in common ownership with the walkers, and then they created a subdivision, and when they cut it out, they, they drew the lines to the right-of-way edge. Thus, what was reserved might well have been in the walkers. But with regard to a right-of-way, the, the doubts have a right of ingress and egress over that. They have a right to travel along it, as does Josh, uh, throughout the whole, the whole length of the right-of-way. So that's permissible. Um, it, but that, that, that right of the doubts does not extend to taking limbs and things and putting it in the right-of-way. That's right. Correct. But it defines, they have entrance and egress, right. whatever. And even though, even though, let's assume for a moment that the walkers own the entire right of way, they can't work on it unless you give them permission. Because it's your it's your right of way. Mm -hmm. So Yes, Dave. So let's assume we own half of that right of way. Uh, the same the same applies, but not to us. You do not own one inch of that. So you're, uh, it seems like you're speculating. Because no, you, do, you don't know. know. Well, no. David, no. You and if you, I, I brought a case because I thought you might try to make the argument that there's a presumption that the right of way extends to, that the property <coughs> only extends to the center of the right of way. And that's it's just not true. Not true. Like, that's well, the presumption of the law. But as the Supreme yeah. Court just recently said, and go ahead, Jeremy. Um, so, so we can we can engage in these hypotheticals. I mean, these are not legally settled issues. I mean, I suspect at some point you may eventually legally settle it. Let's focus on what the town's role is here. And all we can do is control what we do with the right of way. And right now, Josh has 16 and a half feet. That's correct. Until you improve ownership one way or the other, then it becomes, I guess, a civil matter. This this subdivision doesn't prove ownership. This is a subdivision survey. They don't own any part of that road. I mean, that's absolutely irrefutable. But it's it is irrelevant. You are correct. What is relevant is well, it's not irrelevant because we can if we can find out that we we own it, then we can uh, notice them against trespass with uh, criminal um, uh, outcomes. But with respect to maintaining Black's uh, Black Road, that's in your control. So, you know, if you say 20 feet, if you say it's a three rod road, if you say three rods, then Josh has the right to maintain that. But you're right, that's the issue. How much, how much width will you give uh, the walkers to maintain Black Road in light of our claim that uh, the doubts are interfering with uh, the walkers efforts to maintain uh, the road. So and then I mentioned that when I was here before, that the 16 feet wasn't, and that I was going to be back here. And I tried for all last year, I tried to make it all work with the belts. And it's impossible. It's impossible to deal with these people. And well, I apologize, because I don't want to be here as bad as you don't want to be here. Yeah, Pete. Let's just say then, if they're not, in your opinion, respecting the 16 and a half feet, why are they going to respect 20 feet? I mean, I, it just sounds like you need to oh. take this to the next level. Well, I don't think, yeah, you may be right. We may have to. I mean, we, we said at the very beginning, I said, well, why are you here? I had an issue years ago, it isn't where I had problems with a property owner, and they were um, disrespecting, you know, the boundary lines. I'm not saying that's what's going on here, but what happened to me. Bill Jennings was the chief of police. I came up to Bill, I said, Bill, I got a problem, I explained the problem to him. He said, what do you want me to do? I said, I want you to give me advice as to what I should do. Uh, now, there was no ifs, ands, and buts about who owned what. He put some form, I'm not going to split hairs with you on the definition, he put some form of restraining order on those people, punishable by 250 the first time, 500 the second, 1,000 if they broke. The problem went away, literally, overnight. 
I'm not yeah. looking to do something like that. You know, and I'm not even looking to be here now. It was mainly just to have them stop doing what they know. Here. But my point is if we give you 400 feet, well, no, 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 I think no, there's I actually think a reason for that. Them That's them a good question. That here's your property line that they will stop. Okay. I'm, I'm going to move to table this indefinitely. Here a second. For what ground? For why? Okay. For the motion. There's a motion on the floor. Is it second? I think we should deal with it. I think you should deal with it too. Would like to answer your question? Thank you. Is it table? No. 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 I'd like. To second. So yeah, I, th I understand your question. I think the reason why it could affect it is because I'm sorry. The problem seems, Josh. Correct me if I'm wrong. This is. Uh, let me turn it up this way. This is the Dowd's house. It's not the way it's configured, I don't believe. But this is the way it was originally. Did you want to see this? Did you want to look at this? No, I, I just, uh, I would like to just say something quick. Sure, Dave. Uh, so I think you had that just exactly backwards, that, that you granted a, um, a permit to maintain 16 and a half feet. Um, we've complied with it uh, in every respect. And there's a ditch and mowing and other stuff going on outside of that that we're not doing. So we're complying with that permit. It's not the other way around. So so the question is, if it goes to 20 feet, and you give a permit for 20 feet, is it going to be compliance with that 20 feet? So it's not that we're in imposing. It's the other way around. What it was is that no, 16 feet wasn't enough, and what they're doing is if that 16 foot width and the ground, and you can see it in the pictures of the stuff that was all put, like where, where all the blue flags were put, they go and put the ditch outside the outside the flags. Yeah. This is this what is on the agenda here is just for the for the width of Black Road that you are allowed to maintain. So, and this is proving that they don't own Black Road. Wait, hang on. Let me just. What I, I well, want to answer Pete's question, Mr. Kelly's question. If you look at the video, at the uh, the uh, the pictures of the detritus that's been put in the way, it is just outside the boundary line of the 16 feet. It's also where the water would naturally flow. If you extended that area, then Ms. Stout would not be able to place stuff in the right of way of the natural flow of the water. Or if she did, then uh, Josh could remove it and allow it, the water to return to its natural flow. That's why an extension of the width, I think, may achieve the goal that you're talking about. Yes, Beth. Yeah. So, um, huh? Yeah. Yeah, uh, so uh, the, the reason that detritus, which I think usually refers to floating things, but the reason the sticks and twigs were put outside the blue flags was um, simply to put some visualization on where that edge was because it was not getting respected. Um, there is absolutely no way that it's had any effect on drainage. I build and administer maintenance on roads for a living. Um, the, uh, the email that, uh, or the letters that Mr. Merriman sent um, inferred that there had been natural sheeting that occurred uh, as runoff from that section of road, and that's absolutely true, and that stopped when Josh channelized the water, which leaves an unvegetated, scoured surface that increases the velocity of the water and potentially increases erosion. There is nothing that we have done that affects the drainage on that road, period. And nothing has been done inside the permitted uh, access corridor that the select board granted. Well, you can look into the pictures and see, like when they have paved their driveway out into the right of way, that that's directing the water away. And I've actually, before I uh, took the pictures and stuff, I had called contact with the road foreman to come up and just so that he could verify for the board that there was stuff put in there to divert the water, to block the water the way it naturally sheets. Well, this this is just for the 
for the, the width for an extension of the width and um, I don't know uh, how the board feels that extending the width or not because it is a three rod road and then also why do you have a problem with extending the width when they have no right to that road when their property line perfectly shows in the subdivision that their property stops at the edge of the road not the center of the road yeah. well to me that's a civil matter and the rights of way it's not really a right of order yeah. 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 go ahead yeah you should stop talking yeah the uh like i said we're here just for to hear about the, the, the extension if if um you feel that the the, if you, or if you can prove the road, the land under the road is uh, still owned by you, then you certainly have on the on the unused portion of the right of way. You certainly have the right to uh, do what you. Uh, it's your land. It's pretty much what you want to do as long as it doesn't affect the road itself. So all you have to do is take and figure out how to prove that you own. Well, I can prove that they don't own the land. But just get it. <laughs> All right. That's I not. That's not. That's okay. Fine. We'll we'll uh, work on that. Our 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 request here isn't to resolve who uh, who owns the right of way. Our request here is to be given the tools necessary to maintain the road. It's that simple. And uh, Beth Dow asserts that this, that, and the other thing. In the law, we have something called an impeachment of character, and. Uh, you know, I, I, Mr. Hansen finds me to be rude. I've got a video here where they're kicking over a crash can six times, which is an impeachment of her character. Which doesn't have which let me do finish. With a which let me point finish, of order. Let me finish. Evidence is someone whose word is not trustworthy. Her statement that that they have maintained the their they, that they have respected the uh, width of the right of way. Even if it's true, they certainly have not respected it in spirit with the behavior that they've undertaken to redirect. Me. Let me finish. Let the water onto uh, uh, Black Road in a manner that raises the cost for the walkers. Yeah. Okay, Beth. Yeah, so I'm, I'm not even going to go there because uh, it's a civil matter and there's a long list of behaviors uh, on both sides of this. Um, Originally, when you guys were looking at the width of the right-of-way or the access corridor, um, we had concerns that uh, we, you know, we have a yard, we've maintained it as a yard, and um, that was one of the reasons that you decided on 16 and a half feet. I believe you determined that was an adequate width for Josh to maintain. He can dig a ditch, he can plow, he can gravel, grade, crown, whatever. And that has proven to be true. So, uh, uh, so I'm not understanding why it needs to be wider. That affects. Um, that we wouldn't what, be here if it wasn't true. That yeah, affects yeah. our yeah. Um, what we've maintained as our property in our yard. Twenty feet in front of our yard is is a lot. So we we have been through this all before. So the thing would be for the board to have a motion to extend the width or to keep it the same. And as I said, you know, we let that out. It was unconditionally accepted. We didn't get anything in writing. We didn't get any request to change it or reason why. And um, why would we now? Is that a motion, Pete? No. Oh, yeah. Okay. I make a motion to leave it as it is. Do I hear a second? Second. Any further discussion? Do we need the opinion of the town's attorney, Dana? We have gotten the opinion. We do have the three rod right away. Um, he did not weigh in on how wide the permit should be. Well, who was a question? I had a question. What's that? If the attorney had weighed in. Or did you hear the question? Mo the motion, you mean? No, the question. The, 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 the question is whether the town attorney um, 
give us any advice one way or the other about this. Oh. You know, another thing I wanted to put in about this 16 foot wide is I'm in the process of uh, getting a permit now for um, adding another apartment down above a barn that I have. And like if I have another family living down there and we meet on 16 feet wide, which is only 12 feet wide because it's for maintenance and ditch and all this other stuff. I meet somebody on that road at 12 feet wide with another vehicle coming there. How are we supposed to even get by each other? Would that be part of the permitting process? Well, that would be part of it for the uh, for your permit for the apartment. Um, we can jump that bridge when we get there. Right now, we're just uh, trying to get this settled. And also, and I just I just can't understand why I brought it up the last time or the last times that we have been here when the subdivision shows that they do not own the land. Why are why is the board giving them the land? Why is the board saying I can only have 16 feet of this when this definitely shows they do not own the land? Well, the thing of it is that there, Josh, is that the the land ownership isn't really a, uh, in the town's perspective. What's in the town's perspective is the is, is the protection of the right of way. Mm -hmm. And, and I'm trying to protect it too because it's access to my property. Yeah, but for right now, what we are have on the agenda is whether or not you want to extend the width of it. We have a motion in front of the board on the um, uh, to keep it the same, and we are now in the discussion process. But uh, there's been no information. Coming forward, much to uh, to uh, Does it, doesn't it show with the pictures that I've sent and, or that Charlie has sent that of the debris and the stuff that Tim had seen in the, in there to show that I need more width to be able to maintain that. I mean, the pictures and the stuff that came that you got the board all received shows that there's stuff in even their driveway out into where it's filmed it right down to a small area that. I kept clean for years, and their boys used to come and help me do it for years, up until this all started a couple of years ago. Well, in a few minutes, we're about to find out. But like I say, I think the key to the problem is page three, what I'm reading. I know you've said uh, you suspect the walkers own the land. It doesn't matter whether you prove they don't. Let's make sure you do own the land without any questions being asked. It's your property. I mean, I'm reading you, you oh, predict. Okay, I mean, I, you know, if, if that's what Josh wants to do to do the title research, I, I don't mean to be in a cross and examinatorian mode, but it doesn't matter. I mean, the issue here is, okay, yeah, maybe if they own it, it might make it easier for you folks to say, okay, well, he owns it, so we'll give him a tighter width. Maybe that's the reason why you'd like to know whether he owns it or not. But even if he doesn't own it, we'd still ask for a, a you know, it's some guy down in Massachusetts, you know, inherited it by way of 16 generations because the land was never sold out. You know, it happens. Say that's a situation. We'd still be here asking for permission for a wider width. It would just be so happened that it would be over the property owned by George Smith or somewhere, somewhere out in the, in the other regions. Any other discussion on this? Can I, can I suggest something? Sure, Tim. Um, back when I was here in the 80s, we had the same problem on Chase Brook with Keely Alexander and the Leslie family. And the only way they solved the problem was is because town does not know where the center of the road is. So the town had it surveyed <coughs> and found where the center of the road is, and then they measured the width of what they wanted for a road over there. So, me going up there and putting those blue ribbons up, I measured from where, I measured the width of the dirt, and then I measured from the center of that dirt, eight feet, eight and a half feet, both sides. But, who knows if I was measuring from the center of the road, that's what I'm getting at. It's easy enough to see the line of the road. There's yeah, but that doesn't both mean anything. That's, that was the same argument they had over there. It changes over time. 
and it ended up that the Leslies were right and Keely Alexander was wrong. Yeah. Well, the, the, down, permit, the permit though reads uh, eight, and a half, eight and a quarter feet on either side, uh, 16 and a half feet centered on the existing road. Yep. Yes, I know that, but to solve the, the problem of this happening all the time, I think it would be wise to find out where the center of the road is. So then if you measure 16 and a half feet, if you want to leave it the same, at least you'll know where you where you stand with your markers. Because yeah. I mean, the markers might favor them. Maybe the road goes the other way. Yeah. We, we don't know. That's... Yeah. For right now, we just got the motion in front of us. Yeah. yeah. Okay, those in favor of leaving the road with a 16 and a half, uh, allowing Josh to the 16 and a half feet, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. It doesn't change. And so you Where do we go from, from here? here? Yeah, we can prove that uh, something different. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Uh, PPA estoppel and agreement for solar electric project. I did hear from the um, Green Lantern uh, where we had signed an agreement to purchase power from them. They have found an investor for our project. Um, I have had Rob Helper look at this paperwork and decide what was different in this, and he has given it the okay. The Thank you. <laughs> the, um, the changes were minimal. So I guess I'm asking for the chairman to sign this agreement. <clears throat> Move to authorize the chair to sign the agreement as presented. You a second? Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Those, uh, those <laughs> what was that? Gotcha. It's a tool I broke. Oh. He's a snap-on dealer. Oh. <laughs> I forgot it on his truck. Because it's not civilized. Yeah. Uh, what? So, yes. all, those, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Oh. I just thought, what a bizarre night. All of a sudden, someone... <laughs> I thought it was a bullet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, now where are we here? Um, Applications for Peddler's Permit for Christmas Trees by Mike Moeller. Move to approve the application for the Peddler's License for Mike Moeller. Any further discussion? <laughs> Hearing none, those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Bottom left, friend. And those opposed, motion carries. Approval of select board minutes from October 1st, 2018. Move to approve the minutes of the Monday, October 1st, 2018, select board meeting as presented. Second. Any further discussion? Those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, town administrator's report, Nathan. I have a very short report tonight. I'm just reminding you next Saturday is the fire department has invited you all to come to the memorial dedication and recognition service um, at 11 a.m. at the firehouse. I'll be out of town. Okay. Thank you. That's that all thing? I have. Yeah. We're going to be back on schedule in no time. No, right? I know. Uh, round table, B? Um, no, I'm sorry. Wayne? No. Jeremy? I have a, um, a report to 
um, provide to the select board from Central Vermont Internet as required by statute. Um, I, I have it. It's been approved by the board. Um, I'll be sending it by email to all the number towns shortly. Okay. That's all I got. Anyone? Nothing. Executive session, David. Not tonight, no. Move to adjourn. Approved.